Well, 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 here I am reviewing Impact. It feel like it's been a while since I've done this. But I did say last night during my Raw review, which I actually uploaded literally early this morning because YouTube, for whatever reason, was acting suspect. So I did say in the Raw review that I might just review Impact, and yet here I am. I'm reviewing Impact. Now, in case you guys don't know, I am on vacation from my early AM job. So normally at this hour, I'd be in bed, waking up at 3 in the morning. But you're getting a video. You're getting an Impact Wrestling Review for February 16th, 2021. This is the post-Impact coming out of No Surrender 2021, which I know a lot of you that are into Impact Wrestling did watch. I didn't get to watch it. I was actually celebrating my Valentine's Day on that Saturday because I wasn't able to do it on Sunday. So there was that. I do know that there are some people that I know that did watch the show. And they've told me that the show is pretty good. Matter of fact, what I'm going to do, down below in the description box, there's a link. Juggernaut97 did a review. Now, Juggernaut97 actually won my TakeOver Vengeance Day predictions contest. Won 50 bucks by yours truly. So, down below, the link to his video. While you're at it, give him a sub. We're taking this back to the old school days of the YWC. Because why the fuck not? I feel like no one's no one does that anymore. There's that lack of video promotions or if you are showing love. Nowadays, you don't see that, which is, which is sad, but it is what it is. I guess things change within the, within the community, right? But it is what it is. Anyway, if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button down below. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram over at Heel Steven. While you're at it, give this video a big old thumbs up. Share it through social media like I mentioned. Uh, follow me, up, again, on Twitter and on Instagram. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you know when i upload when i go live and all that stuff i thought impact tonight was pretty pretty solid on this episode of impact you had the debut of finn juice of juice robinson and david finley from new japan pro wrestling yeah they were mentioning this on saturday they played a whole video and got everyone buzzing about this again the forbidden door is open between All Elite Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, and New Japan Pro Wrestling. So we're getting New Japan talent heading over to the Impact Zone. My question is, who's next? Are we going to get Kota Ibushi? Are we going to get Tetsuya Naito? Are we going to get Evil? I hope we don't get Great Khan. I swear to God, Impact Wrestling, if you bring Great Khan to the Impact Zone, I am changing the channel. Matter of fact, I watched it on Twitch. So I'm going to hit the X button. I'm, I'm good. Maybe Tanahashi. Maybe Okada. There were talks of Okada making his way back to the States. Either for the for Impact Wrestling or maybe All Elite Wrestling. Who the fuck knows? But this got fans buzzing. This got fans excited and all that stuff. So I think that's in a way a W, if you will. Um, but there was that also we had in the beginning of the show a very excellent X Division Championship match between champion TJP and challenger Josh Alexander. And I did say, it's crazy, a couple of months ago when the North were still on impact, right, that someone like an Ethan Page would be that guy, right? And granted, we did, at the time, he was still at the company, now he's no longer there, what have you. But I did say someone like Ethan Page down the road could be a world champion for Impact Wrestling. Someone like a Bobby Roode was back in the day. And I can see now and again, I don't really know what is the status of the contract of Josh Alexander. But if you're Impact Wrestling right now, that is someone you're going to... That is someone that I would hope that they would try to lock to a new deal. Because that's someone that if you're Impact, you can build around for the future. But that's just my humble opinion and all that fun stuff. We also got a old school rules match between Moose and Tommy Dreamer for the umpteen time. I felt like I've seen this before, if you will. But it is what it is. 
Um, again, if you enjoyed Impact tonight, let me know in the comment threads or let me know on Twitter or Instagram, what have you. Let me the fuck know, okay? Anyway, this show kicked off with the X Division Championship match between TJP and Josh Alexander, like I mentioned before. It was excellent. And again, I, I'm not big on the on the imitation of the fan noise and shit. I know they're amping the noise or putting it in there and shit to make it seem like there's people there, but there really isn't. I know WWE does it with the Thunderdome or even, yeah, with the Thunderdome and it comes off as eh, if you will, but it is what it is too. But you got to get some energy, I guess, to get the wrestlers excited to just be there in an empty building. But I thought this match was very, very good. It was excellent. For a second, I thought I was watching a main event. For a second there, I felt like I wasn't watching Impact. I was watching a pay-per-view on a Saturday night. I literally thought that with this match. Just good counter-wrestling back and forth. Uh, There's a moment where TJP went for the Mamba Splash and got countered. Uh, Josh Alexander locked in the ankle lock. He, he did the whole Kurt Angle where he would lock the ankle, the ankle lock, right? And he would lay down and wrap his legs around the opponent's leg. And usually when that happens, it's a wrap. It's over. The tap out. And also during this match too, TJP was locking in the triangle choke and got countered. There's a moment where Josh Alexander lifted up TJP and extended his whole shoulder and it looked painful. Similar to, I guess, Vitor and John Jones from many, many years ago in the UFC. But you kind of get the idea, right? Eventually, it was all said and done, right? TJP locked in the detonation kick. He hit him with it, right? Josh Alexander then went for the Mamba Splash and got the one, two, three. And still the X Division champion, TJP. But again, I thought this was a very good match to kick off the show. You would think, again, you're watching a main event. You had Matt Stryker and D'Lo Brown on commentary just being excited for this match. As if they were calling a match at WrestleMania, for instance, or at the Tokyo Dome. That's what it felt like here. And that's cool. And I think, again, you know, having com- new commentary people in Matt Stryker and D'Lo Brown is awesome. I prefer this over fucking match over fucking Josh Matthews and his wife. There's finally some new energy in the commentary team, in the broadcast table, which it definitely needed. And I'm happy for Impact Wrestling doing the right move here. After this, um, or later on in the night, you see TJP in, in Scott Demore's office. And then out comes um, Ace Austin, who's the winner of the Super X Cup. And he's entitled, he's supposed to get a championship match against TJP. So instead of Scott Demore, I don't know why, but they're doing this whole thing where next week it's a six-person tag, right? It's basically, yeah, where if Ace Austin and his team do get the win, then next week they'll, then the week after they're gonna face in a triple threat, and the winner of that gets a shot at TJP and the X Division title, which is kind of like why it doesn't make sense. Because, again, he did win this tournament, that being Ace Austin. And I don't know, again, those two having a match would be fucking awesome. So there's that, too. So after this, we get a more X Division here, sort of seems like. But you kind of get the idea. You had Willie Mack versus Davari versus Trey Miguel versus uh, Suicide. Uh, Fatal 4-Way. I thought this match was... Pretty good for what it was. Uh, everyone got their spots in. Uh, Trey Miguel, it looked like he hurt his knee somewhere in this match, and he was selling it. Also wrestling in the Jordan 1s, but hey, it is what it is, if you will. Um, the Vari sees control, beating down the hooded vigilante of impact. And there's a moment in this match where Mac did a... Standing moonsault on both Trey. I think it was also suicide. Uh, but it was all said and done, right? Uh, the former rascal recovered with Mac and Davari out of the picture and delivered a meteor to suicide for the win. So all of this and Trey Miguel got the win. 
again, I said I said this on around the point this past Sunday. You know, when you hear that, you know, MSK won the Dusty Rotation Classic. You know, people are wondering how come Trey didn't go. Again, Trey Miguel is still in his mid twenties. He still has a long way to go. He's gonna get there, but I think him staying in Impact, trying to, I guess, make a what's the word I'm looking for here. I don't want to come off like an asshole when I say this shit either. I don't want to come off like an asshole trying to, I guess, make a name for himself more than what he already is. You know what I mean? That's awesome. And I think someone like Trey Miguel and Impact down the road is also a future big-time player for that company. So there is that. And after this, as he's leaving, he's backstage, he gets confronted by Sammy Callahan, who basically says that, hey, you know, at no sur- at no surrender, he didn't get the job done, right? And he talks about that he's basically afraid, that being Trey Miguel. He's afraid, he's a coward and shit like that. And then you see Trey Miguel, like he just walks away. So it looks like we're getting this Trey Miguel and Sammy Callahan program. I mean, again, it should be a fun match for what it's worth. Let's see what they can do. So there's that. Um, after this, we get backstage, we get, um, Brian Myers and Hernandez, I guess they're making some type of deal, right? Money up front, the half up front and the half of the whole thing is over, but we're going to get Hernandez and Matt Cardona. Also, we had, I guess, Fall Out Ball wanting money too and shit. So Hernandez gave him a 10 and turned it into 20 because apparently Fall Out Ball has a gambling problem, apparently, which we found out. In that Johnny Swinger, and I think that character is hilarious, by the way. His little uh, uh, Swinger's Palace, right? And they had this whole gambling thing. They're playing card, or they're betting and shit. And Fall Ball Laws, and he got escorted out by the women. So that was hilarious. You had James Storm, and you had Chris Sabin there. You had Alicia Edward. I guess she's now a rapper. I don't know, but yeah, there's that too. But I think Johnny Swinger is hilarious. His character, to me, is funny as all hell. So there's that too. Um, but we go back to Matt Cardona versus Hernandez. This match was for what is worth. It was a whatever match. Um, when it was all said and done, though, Cardona did get the win over Hernandez. Which again, Hernandez at this point of his career is just there to put over people, and that's fine for what it's worth. And he did win. That being, that being again, Cardona won with the Rough Rider. I don't know what he's calling it now, but that's what I remember it, the move being. And after the, there's a confrontation between Matt Cardona and Brian Meyer, who was at ringside watching this match. Like, what's going on? Why is he like this? What have you? Brian Meyer talks about how he came to Impact first. And Cardona followed him. And then Hernandez comes back into the ring, and they're beating on Matt Cardona. Out comes Eddie Edwards, who, again, deserves better. It's funny because Kaiji Muto, the great Muto, right, won the GHC Heavyweight Championship at, at the old age that he's in. And there are talks of Kaiji Muto coming to Impact, rather than defend that title, coming to Impact. And Eddie Edwards, who is a former GHC Heavyweight Champion in Pro Wrestling Noah in Japan, uh, retweeted it. So there's that idea that, hey, we're going to get the great Muto versus Eddie Edwards. I don't really know. Depends. I don't know. If they can get the great Muda to come over to America with these travel restrictions, I don't fucking know. I mean, it's possible. But then again, you have Impact work, working with New Japan. But you're going to bring in the champion from Pro Wrestling, Noah. I don't know how is that going to work, but it is what it is. But Eddie Edward makes the save here for Matt Cardona. And it looks like maybe next week or so we're going to we're gonna get a tag team match player of Hernandez and... Brian Myers versus Matt Cardona and Eddie Edwards. I could be wrong, but it is what it is. Okay. After this, we get the anticipated debut of Finn Juice, Juice Robinson, and David Finley versus Reno Scum. Finally, right? They're in the impact zone. They were hyping this shit up from since Saturday, right? They came out, and I thought the match for what it was worth it was very good. Good back and forth. Um, they were talking on commentary how Finn Juice, David Finley, is the son of Fit Finley. Juice Robinson's been places before as well. 
how they've been so accustomed to the Japanese style that how difficult will it be for them to wrestle the American style. But then again, you know, again, they've been in Japan this entire time. But again, for what it was worth, Reno Scum at this point in Junction, hey, you knew they were gonna get the pin. They were gonna eat the pin. They did. It was all said and done. Uh, they did pay tribute. That being Finn Juice paid tribute to Power and Glory, the suplex of the Frog Splash combination for the one, two, three. And after this, the Good Brothers came out. The Good Brothers of Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson, who are the Impact World Tag Team Champions, to congratulate these young boys. Because remember, many many years ago. When the Good Brothers were in New Japan, part of the Bullet Club in 2015 or so, Finn Juice, that being Juice Robinson and Dave Finley, were young boys. 2015, 2016, around that time, they were young boys, if you will, right? So it's made how time has changed, and they just want to celebrate, drink some beers, what have you, drink some whiskey, whatever the fuck it was. And it looked like Finn Juice were, were, were with it. But then he threw some jokes in there, if you will. Something about Anderson waking up in piss. But it looks like, hey, they're teasing this whole thing where Finn Juice might be going after the Impact World Tag Team titles. I mean, the and again, this whole talk about the forbidden door being open, right? Are you going to put these two guys that are technically not wrestling for Impact, that are from another company, right out of the gate, challenging for your t- tag titles, but then again, Private Party did the same thing at No Surrender. So there's that. I mean, we'll see what happens with that. It should be something interesting, but we'll see. Um, after this, we get, if I remember correctly, backstage we had, um, was it the women? Yeah, we had Tenniel Dashwood, and I guess it was Neva. Now, prior to this backstage, you had... Um, Jessica Havoc, right? Jessica Havoc or Havoc, whatever the fuck you want to call her. Uh, trying to talk to Neva. I think I know Surrender they lost. Something like that. And Neva's like, where do we go from here? And then Tenille comes out offering to be the new tag team partner with Havoc to get rid of Neva. Because Neva's dead weight. So then Neva's like, let's do this in the ring tonight, right now. And the match for what it was worth, it was... Or whatever match. Nothing to go crazy about here. Uh, Neva created a separation and mounted a comeback that included a near fall off a big clothesline. She went, she sent Dashwood face first into the mat, but still could not put her away. The Daniel Dashwood withstood an onslaught, dropped Neva on the turnbuckle, and scored a win with a running boot. To all that and Neil Dashwood got the win. Caleb Whitaker was paying, I guess, a tribute or an homage to either Brother Love or John Lerner Knight at WrestleMania 28 with his attire, just with shorts. But there's that too, if you will. Um, again, for what is worth, you know, someone like Tenille Dashwood, you would think she'd be knockouts champion right now, right? And if she's doing this stuff, it's, it's again, it's kind of. Eh, because you know how good she is, and she deserves better, too. I talk about how Eddie Edward deserves better. So does Neil Dashwood. So there's that, too. Um, also, backstage, we had um, we had Kimberly and Susan and, I guess, the Knockouts champion here, right? Uh, confronting, I guess, talking between each other. Apparently, Susan wants a match with Jazz because she got pinned by her, right? Something like that. The pay-per-view. It's like I'm having a fucking brain fart right now. I'm having a fucking brain fart on who... Uh, Deanna Perrazzo. Yeah, fuck. I won't, I won't forget who the fucking knockout champion. That's how long it's been since I watch Impact, right? So Deanna Perrazzo wants her to calm down. She goes to Scott Demore and makes a proposition. You know, how about we get... I, I guess she wants... So the man, because again, she is a two-time knockouts champion, wrestler of the year, and knockout of the year, right? And Scott Demore, like, hey, you know, I could do that, but at the same time, she proposed a tag. I guess he proposed a tag team match or a six-person tag. Yeah, it was a six-person tag between the three of them against, I guess, Jordan, uh, I guess, uh, fucking Jordan Grace, Jad, and someone else, something like that. And there was that. But yeah. Also, we got a vignette, a video package from Eric Young and his faction, Violent by Design. 
somewhere here, Cody Diener is, I guess, challenging Jay to a tables match, talking about how if he loses, he has to suffer the consequences for his for his defeat and shit like that. Pretty good for what it was worth. Nothing to go crazy about here either. Um, also, after we got the main event, the old school rules match. Old school rules. Tommy Dreamer and Moose. Now, remember, Tommy Dreamer had no surrender. Went at it with Rich Swan. Rich Swan was not in the building. And then out came Moose, and they had a match. It's a typical hardcore match. Somewhere in this match, you know, you hear you hear Moose talking to Dreamer, like, listen, nothing personal, it's business. Where is Rich Swan? And he gets speared into the table in the corner. The same way, I guess, with Lana through Nia Jack with the, after the whole my whole thing out on Raw last week. Similar. And you see Moose smiling and laughing about this shit. And Dreamer's getting the momentum. He grabs a kendo stick to no avail. Moose hits a Uranagi. And you hear the comments of your striker and D'Lo Brown feeling so bad about what's going on. Like they're worried about Dream about Dreamer here. And then Dreamer gets speared by Moose for the one, two, three, and Moose won the old school rules match. To close off impact, it looks like again if the way things are going at the next pay-per-view, we're gonna get Moose versus Rich Swan. And hopefully then Rich Who loses the championship. Uh, come on, Impact, let's get it together, okay? Moose is a bit Moose has been on a fucking roll right now. He looks like a fucking unit. Let's just keep him 100 right now. That is a guy who I put my world title on. If I'm a wrestling promotion. But we'll see what happens again. But again, I thought Impact tonight was a pretty, pretty solid show. Um, I guess hopefully this gets you to look forward to next week. I don't know what my schedule is next week from work. Because again, I have two jobs. So there's that too. So if I'm not able to talk about Impact next week, I'll talk about it on the podcast. This next coming Sunday on Around the Point. In case you guys don't know, again, I'm on vacation for my for my morning job. So I'm going to be able to pump out these reviews this week. Just keep that in mind. Food for thought. I do plan tomorrow to watch both shows of AEW, Dynamite, and NXT. Maybe do a double review. I don't know how the fuck I'm going to do it. Or maybe I'll just do one review and then give that review the time for that show. And then do the review for another show, if you will. That's my plan. But also Thursday, likely Thursday or Friday, mostly Friday, I'll be doing my predictions for WWE Elimination Chamber. Sunday, I'm going live with the review after the show is over. Okay, so again, if you are, and also one more thing, I'm doing another cooking video this weekend. Yes, Steve's Kitchen Episode 2 drops this weekend also. I did a cooking video as well. I love to cook, in case you guys don't know. So again, if you're yet not subbed to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, be notified when I upload a wrestling review, when I upload a cooking video, and hell, when I go live for Around the Point, like I will be this Sunday, giving my predictions, or my review for that matter, of WWE Elimination Chamber. Again, you guys are awesome as always. Follow me on Twitter at HeelSteven, Instagram as well. Also, like I mentioned before, if you really want to hear a review of No Surrender, go check out Juggernaut. 90, go check out Juggernaut 97. Link to his review down below in the description. So give him a watch, give him a sub, and all that fun stuff. And with that being said, guys, I'm gonna head out. It's over. It's over. It's over. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. I am Steve, and this has been Around the Point. Peace out, dorks.